Karen from ediblewildfood.com here and I'm on a nice stroll in central Ontario and look what I found. A small patch of gem studded puffballs. These are edible and I'm going to talk a little bit more about this shortly. Stay tuned. So these are Lycoperdum perlatum, if I'm pronouncing that properly. Lyco means wolf. Perdum means flatulence. So many think that the flatulence is the reference to when the spores right at the apex, when they open up and they explode. We don't know for sure, but it certainly makes sense. Anyways, these gem studded puffballs are saprobic. They grow solitary or in clusters and they love the ground that has a well decayed wood or mulch. And right here is Primo. You'll find these anytime between July and October, depending on where you are in North America. And I believe these grow in Europe and Asia as well. The size of these, let me get down a little further. Uh, let's, there we go. Let's see what I can do. Oh, look at that. There we go. So the, the cap part of it right here, these measure anywhere from two and a half to six and a half centimeters wide or about one to two and a half inches which I would say most of these are about one inch or two and a half centimeters. And the height can be exactly the same. And as you can see, they have a bit of a pear shape to them. Let's do that. Hang on a sec. There we go. You can see there's a bit of a pear shape to them. And they're usually elongate and they have a stalk-like spike. I found some young growth of the gem studded puffball and it looks like a slug is quite enjoying itself. When they get a little bit bigger, they will become pure white and they're covered with conical spines and with maturity, they kind of break off a bit and they can leave a pattern of pits. So I'm going to see if I can get in. I'm probably going to have to go back to that other patch. Yeah, I'm going to go back to that other patch. And, by the way, here are some that are way past their best before date. Okay, so, let's see if I can... Yeah, you can see... Wait a minute. Sorry about that. You might be able to see a bit of the conical spine formation there. Now, technically, these are edible, but before I get to that, I just want to speak to one more thing about these. So there's a pore-like mouth that forms at the apex, which is the darkening color here, as it ages. And... That area of this puffball is called the osteole, and it allows the spores to puff out when they're ready. Now, these are edible, but only when the internal spore tissue, which is called the gleba, is totally white and uniform and we'll find out shortly when I take a couple uh, to the back there and I'll cut one open. The only thing that a new forager would have to be aware of is to be very careful not to confuse these with any of the Amanita species. Um, Amanitas are enclosed with a universal veil 
but when you cut them in half, you're going to see evidence of gills. And when you cut these, there's, you will not see any gills. So I tested them and right here, they're rather firm and take a look at that. The gleba is, oh, excuse me, hang on. There we go. It's firm. It's white, which means these are going to get cooked up for breakfast this morning. And I want to thank each and every one of you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you are a subscriber, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. And if you're new to my channel, if you can do me the kindness and consider sharing. So breakfast is next. And what a wonderful way to end a weekend away.